Hi, I'm Holly the Reluctant Reader and recently I have read this fantastic book Unladylike by Heather Vandenberg and very fortunate to have her with us today to have a chat in a bit more depth about her book. So Heather, lovely to meet you. Um, let's be honest, this is our second time I'm doing this after our technical error the first time. Yeah, talk to you again anyway. Um, so for those who uh, might not know you, can you tell us a bit about yourself and introduce your book Unladylike? Yeah, sure. So my name is Heather Vandenberg. Um, I am a wrestler turned writer about wrestling. Um, I have been wrestling for about 10 years um, and for various reasons I had to take time out from the ring. And during that time I wrote a book called Unladylike, A Girl's Guide to Wrestling which is the probably the first like very outwardly feminist book about what it takes to become an independent wrestler um and it's also biographical but also it's designed as a book um for people who have no experience or know nothing about wrestling to find out why someone would ever you know take up a hobby that means pretending to hit other people in lycra which is what wrestling is um so that's my book and um it's on sale now on amazon and at all places that books are sold brilliant um so tell us a bit more about how long have you been wrestling and um what is your favorite me memory from your wrestling career to date um so i have been wrestling i started in 2011 um a lot of people assume that if you are a wrestler, you've been obsessed with this since a child. I knew nothing about wrestling at all. I completely took it up by accident um, because I used to be a stand-up comedian. And I performed at a gig once and a guy behind the bar, the Resistance Gallery in London, literally was like, do you want to come train to be a wrestler? And I kind of laughed at him and agreed um, because the first session was free. So that was in 2011. Um, and I couldn't do a press up. Um, I couldn't do, couldn't lift another person. I couldn't really do anything exercise based. Um, but just the sudden feeling of being in my body and doing something that made me feel strong and loud and taking up space. Um, and it is so over the top and it's so much about telling a story than being like a fit person just I was sold immediately to wrestling so um after about four or five years of working really hard I finally got to the point where I started wrestling with a Mexican I would say we're like a alternative lucha libre cabaret night called lucha fratania um and I started wrestling as la rana venenosa the poison frog woman and that's kind of where my journey started in terms of being in the ring and I've wrestled in Berlin, I've wrestled at festivals, I have, um, I met my partner, I've met many, many friends, um, and I basically was really lucky enough to be brought into this world, which I assume be full of like these over the top unfriendly masculine men, but actually is full of weirdos and nerds who are so obsessed with wrestling, it wasn't enough to just watch it on TV, they actually had to take the next step and get in the ring themselves. Um, so that's, that's my wrestling journey really. Unfortunately in 2015, um, I got diagnosed with PCOS and a chronic pain disorder. And then I went on to have cancer of the ovary. And, um, so I had quite a significant amount of time out, but wrestling, no matter how much pain I've been in and how much I felt I'd lost of my own body I was always just like ready to get back in the ring because it gave me something else other than just you know the feeling of performing in front of a crowd it's it's something that I talk about in my book a lot actually it's just like the embodiment of doing something really weird and fun yeah. um so my favorite memory from wrestling um, is that once I had to go to Berlin for like less than 24 hours to wrestle at the private party of a drug dealer um, and it was like 15 of us so we all got wrestled at and we all got um, flown out there and picked up like rock stars um, at the uh, at the airport which was very exciting obviously we didn't know it was the biggest drug dealer in Berlin <laughs> we just private party and um, 
yeah, and we wrestled at this really beautiful, really? Sorry, it was my cat. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultimate lockdown life uh, video. Yeah, they're always there. <laughs> um, so basically, <laughs> We um, got taken to this beautiful building and got like treated really well and got given loads of beer and meals and they hired out this massive ring. They're like, oh yeah, you, you can do whatever you want. Um, but you all just have to stay in this room, um, this backstage dressing room, um, because it's like an immersive experience and everyone's going to be going around this building and it's going to be like a David Lynchian fantasy. And then at one o'clock in the morning, they will come in this room and then you'll do a wrestling show except they didn't give us anything to drink except red bull and gin there was no water like no nothing so basically by 1am everyone had cracked and everyone yeah. had either had red bull or gin and we then had to go and wrestle in front of 200 people who had no idea what they're about to see and then we all had to just be wrestlers and um it was really fun and it went well uh, it was also completely surreal because the audience got really into it, but they also got like were like picking us up and all of this other stuff. And then afterwards, you went back to our dressing room to kind of like demask and all that stuff. And it had been turned into like a jazz club, so like we had no word to, so we just had to like walk around as wrestlers until the party finished. Fully, fully geared up and just yeah. uh, continuing the act as such. Yeah, basically, I just ended up just riding a cow, dre like a <laughs> cow dressed in my costume, drinking beer. I finally found some beer. So, you know, and then we all had to get home on a 7 a.m. flight. And that was... <laughs> and we all that, is a that is a pretty cool story. And it's one of my favourite stories from your book, uh, In All Honesty. I was like, really? Like, you, you can't make this stuff up. Like, that's, that's, it was a very, very cool uh, memory to have, for sure. Um, well, I think the other thing is as well that people assume that if you become a wrestler, you're you're going to just compete in like the big sort of WWE franchises and everything you see on TV. It's not like that at all. And I think mm -hmm. a very important thing about my book is that it celebrates um, wrestlers that no one has heard of. Yeah. Um, but like me. <laughs> but lots of people I would, they're incredibly talented, but this, this is how you make your money. You don't make it from performing to 20 people in a town hall you make it from doing saying yes to pretty much any opportunity all the weird and wonderful stuff but yeah i think like I before when we spoke before like i'm from a football background but i used to love wrestling growing up and it was only seeing wwe wwf and then the very very small amount of the odd one or two female wrestlers like china etc that you would ever be exposed to women in wrestling let alone wrestling at all so yeah. to the book it was really fascinating to see kind of like real world wrestling if that makes sense and the non-glamorized side of side of it which yeah. is like grassroots wrestling almost which I think is is really insightful and important for people to kind of see the full spectrum of what's available out there for them to take part in absolutely and also all wrestlers worth their salt have you know they've all got these stories wrestle we wrestle for the stories I think that's what we do I mean you have to earn your stripes you have to the only way you can learn to be a wrestler is if you have done it the hard and difficult way where you've put the ring up and you've you know spent hours and hours and hours hitting the mat and it is more difficult if you're a woman because because of inbuilt sexism and mm -hmm. because society doesn't really support you to become like a weaponized version of your own body but also as you say because visibly there isn't actually that many female wrestlers to look up to this is changing it's changed in the last 10 years but i think china was really the only sort of take-home memory for quite a lot of girls and women who watched wrestling at that time when it was like the biggest industry in the world but you know, like their biggest star was a female star was China, and sadly, you know, she became a porn star and passed away. You know, that's kind of yeah. all you have to say, really, about how the industry treats women. But I mean, at the end of the day, like my other favorite thing about this book journey is Mick Foley read it. And yeah, he, I did see that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that was like, I mean, I'm not going to say it's the best day of my life because, like, objectively, giving birth to my son is the, probably the best day of my life. But Mick Foley liking my book was definitely more physically enjoyable and mentally and emotionally more enjoyable than giving birth because it was it was a big moment. So 
it's, it's absolutely goals in, in terms of like wrestling world and having you know an icon such as Mick to to give kudos back to your book um, yeah. so let's pick up more on kind of the diversity side of things so in the book you talk a lot about a lack of diversity in UK wrestling and in wrestling in general like we just sort of touched on um, traditionally coming from the whole ingrained male dominance and although this is being addressed as a balance what more do you think can be done to make this sustainable in the industry? I think there's um, so there's been a movement that if people are interested in sort of hearing about why and what needs to change in wrestling um, by looking at the um, hashtag speaking out at the moment on the internet you'll hear a lot of women and men talking about their mistreatment in the industry because they're women or because they're people of colour or because they're queer and I think that basically that's the evidence you need to see what still needs to change and that is the industry is still written by and for white straight men mm -hmm. whereas if you actually want to have something that is interesting and appeals to a wider range of people you need to change that so even though there are more there's, first of all there, you have to look at this intersectionally and obviously for because of black lives matter and everything that's come out in terms of how far the world generally needs to go in having like more black and brown faces generally speaking in everything mm. wrestling is an example of that because um even though in the ring and on most of like, the main shows wrestling looks pretty diverse it's not because the people who get paid the most and the people who hold the championships do tend to be like white straight men or white pretty women yeah so it, it, there needs to be like some serious thought about not just booking like a token person to make meet your quota like actually making these people your champions and actually giving them a decent storylines and characters that aren't just stereotypes so there's that but behind the scenes that's quite a bigger thing that needs to change as well is that wrestling is the you know it's like if in film the majority of writers producers directors are white straight men in their middle age it's the same in wrestling you know if you go to a wrestling show there are women cameramen there aren't female announcers there aren't female referees it's changing very very slowly but it's still very much seen as like if you have any kind of credibility or knowledge in wrestling you have to have a penis uh, to the extent I have actually had men explain my book to me and explain why wrestling needs feminism to me and talk over me while I'm you know they're promoting my book so it's more that even though they want to say that as an industry they're they're seeking these new opportunities they're not necessarily actually putting their money where their mouth is and actually mm. saying okay, well we're going to give this job of writing all of the storylines for the next six months to a woman yeah. because you know imagine that so that's again it's like back it's, it's through the whole thing because you know it's still seen as a male sport so therefore women can't can still not hold like the top roles within it like open the promotion but because of everything that's happened with speaking out so many people have been called out have been named and shamed as perpetrating basically like these cycles of abuse and cronyism that mean actually in some cases quite serious harm has come to young women within wrestling so i think that there's like a real push to change that and have more female-led and more female representative um sort of like promotions and that kind of thing so it's going in the right way it just needs to wrestling needs to use this time where we actually legally cannot wrestle enough in person to maybe yeah. actually about how to rebuild things behind the scenes that's really interesting so kind of building on that again what would the key points in your open letter to women interested in wrestling be um it would be the first step through the door is the hardest so if you even get to the point where you're looking for a wrestling school you are amazing and well done and the second one is um don't if you is go with a friend 
to your first wrestling training session because it is less intimidating and you're more likely to fight to feel confident and push yourself a bit more um and even if that person doesn't necessarily want to continue you might i went with i started wrestling with my best friend becca she got concussed about three weeks in she has a massive head like it was going to happen but you know she decided she didn't want to wrestle and i was already like this is what this is my jam so um there's that um my third thing is if you wrestle and you don't like it because it hurts you know don't that doesn't mean you can't be involved in wrestling that's my previous point if you love wrestling and you want to be involved you can ring announce you can referee you can help organize a promotion you can sell t-shirts and design t-shirts you're still actively involved with the wrestling industry and just having more women and more queer people and more people of color in those kind of really important roles is is changing things so i would just go for it find a wrestling school and just try start try training and see what happens brilliant um and then kind of just to finish off <clears throat> excuse me so wrestling has in your it's really clear that wrestling has helped you in part overcome some pretty heavy stuff in your life and yes. you've done that a little bit earlier on at the start of the conversation um what would you say the power of sport has helped to tran what should I say would you say that the power of sport has helped to transform your life whereas without it things may have turned out very differently i would say wrestling has saved my life <laughs> most definitely um <laughs> i think that it's lots of it's very complicated to kind of pull apart <laughs> why um because <laughs> It's, I, it's like one of those things, it's like, if you find anything you love, including a person, like, you can't imagine your life without it. Mm -hmm. But I was not a happy person before I started wrestling. And I don't know if that's because, you know, I hated my body. And to the extent I'd just given up on it. And age 22 is not, is too, just don't, just don't give up on your body at any age. That's my advice. But I'd given up. I just hated it. I didn't like yeah. it. And I'm not saying, yeah, okay, wrestling did help me sort of like my body more, but not in an aesthetical way, in a way that I was like, I can use my body to do this cool thing. Mm. You know, completely changed, you know, my relationship with this, this thing I live in. And like, to, that's huge. And uh, I do talk about it in my book. I was raped as a student and I didn't necessarily realize that what had happened was rape until I had more control and more self-worth. And that's quite a big thing. I don't think I would have been able to call it that and name it for what it was and deal with it for what it was unless I had enough self-love to kind of recognize when someone had done harm to me yeah um, another thing as well though is like and i always say this this is like the main reason i wrote a book is that if you take up a weird hobby it doesn't matter what it is morris dancing you know like northern soul dancing even if you only do it for a few years you make friends and you find new types of people to have a connection with because the great thing about wrestling is it's a weird subculture but it has a huge diversity of of people who enjoy it okay yeah it's written by and for straight white men but i've met so many so many so many different types of people from different backgrounds and different jobs and different ages and genders and sexualities who all, all just meet under this umbrella term of loving wrestling mm. and to become part of that kind of community that saved me that made me find friends and my partner and some kind of sense of belonging where I think that maybe I wouldn't have found any of that if I hadn't have done this. I don't know where I would be. I definitely wouldn't have written a book. I definitely wouldn't have had all these adventures. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's the power of wrestling is for me. And I think anyone who kind of finds something they love to do, would agree with me that that's one of the best things you can do to yourself. You owe it to yourself to feel more happy in the skin you're in. 100%. And I think that's so underrated. Yeah, I do too. You don't get that message enough, 100%. Yeah. So thank you very, very much. Do you want to tell us about where we can buy this again? And how yeah, sure. 
Um, so you can buy a copy of Unladylike like a Girl's Guide to Wrestling by Heather Bamenberg um, online at Amazon. You can buy it at Waterstones. Um, you can buy it in foils. You can buy it lots of different places online. But the best thing to do is to go to your independent bookshop and ask them to order it in and give them the money because that way we're going to keep the book industry alive. Very um, true. Very true. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much, Heather. That is fine. Uh, um, look forward to talking to you again maybe if you do another book <laughs> with my teething baby yeah i'll just i'll just knock another one i'll just write one about um how to raise a child next. how to raise a child in wrestling i think that I mean, that could have legs oh god imagine that <laughs>